some shit drivers. Y'all see that? I just seen the sign. It said I-80 is closed. Next 125 miles. Truck parking at 12 miles. So I guess I'll find out soon enough what's going on. I said the wind too high. I think it's like the wind's like 80 miles an hour. I see the windmills out there. They, they spinning pretty hard. Find out in 12 miles. Well, looks like looks like I 80 about to be shut down for the night. Pretty much drive at your own risk. When I got to that point where it said uh, truck parking. I mean, hell, hell, I just kept going. I seen, I seen a lot of trucks pulled over, but I seen some, uh, I seen one truck get off and got right back on. But I just seen another sign that said, um, uh, fr frost on the road, slick road, stuff like that. So I just pulled over, did some math real quick. I think I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down for the night. Not right here. It's a loves 20 miles down the road. I'm gonna go there. And I still have like 990 miles, I think, for my trip. Something like that. I'm, I'm gonna just say a thousand. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down up here. Then I can do 500 tomorrow, 500 Tuesday. But really, I'm gonna try to get like, maybe like 600. Uh, well, I don't, know. I don't know about tomorrow, man. Cause they talking about they want everybody off the road by six o'clock. But I'm shutting down early tonight, so maybe I can uh, get up early in the morning. But this right here is called a point of interest. I just seen it when I was coming up the freeway. It looks like an old, I don't know what it is. It looks like an old grave or something. We're about to go check it out. I don't know if y'all can feel this wind on this microphone. See, we got some trucks pulled over. There ain't hardly nobody on this highway. Nobody. I was like, man. Let's check this thing out. Looks like an old graveyard. I didn't put my damn coat on. I'm going right back to the truck. Wyoming, Sherman Mountains. Anybody up there here? It says erosional remnants. stuff like that. I ain't got time. I'm about to get down the road to this loves 20 miles away. Wyoming Tree Rock. Alright, that's about it. I'm getting back in the truck. What's up, drivers? You don't hear my engine right now, do you? Pretty quiet? I'm in Eco Coast. Going down the mountain. 5% grade, next 5 miles. Uh oh, picking speed up. I'm gonna start jaking now. I found me somewhere to park. I'm about, I think I'm about 12 miles from it, from my loves. Gotta go ahead and shut it down for the night. There's a jake. I ain't taking no chances on this mountain tonight, man. And this ice, not tonight. Not tonight. We're gonna jake it on down. 5% grade. I don't want to get too big for my bridges, man. I've been rolling these 5 percenters. I think it's time for me to hit a 10%. What a 10% set. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't know. Be 
careful with this ice and this jake brake too. So both hands are on the wheel. Yeah, I made the right decision to go ahead and park tonight. I don't need to plan around or bring the dark. No trucks coming up behind me too. Yeah, they must. Yeah, they, they know what it is. I'm the only rookie out here. Y'all ever felt the pressure in your ears pop when you're coming down these mountains? And if I didn't tell you already, I got 48,000 on the bank. CR England trucks was covered, man. My truck runs 65. Man, I had a CR England shoot by me uh, not too long ago. And we weren't even going down here. Flat land. I'm, I'm running 65. Man, that, that dude shot by me so fast. I said, what in the world? Take it up a level. Trucks going up. They got their blinkers on. Yeah, y'all better get out the road, man. And that sign say five and a half. It looks at five and a half percent. There's a dummy. Super truck. I'm running 55 right now. So he got to be running by 70. I ain't gonna hit his brakes. You go down the mountain a million times too slow, you're only gonna go down too fast one time. There's the exit I'm going to right there, 310. I'm starting to see the signs for it, exit 310. That's where the love is at. Yep, I'm about to get a shower tonight. I ain't had one since Friday. Been two days. I didn't get one last night. Yeah, I'm gonna get one tonight. Shower. Shower power. Damn, am I, am I at the bottom yet? I, I think this is damn drop. It looks like it's leveling out. After I get around this curve, I'm gonna take the Jake off. Alright, Fred, take it off now. Let's go Eco Coast. If y'all don't know how to do the Eco Coast, you really just gotta let off the jake, let off the gas, and just roll. Yeah, right now you see it's in Eco Coast, you don't hear the engine. That's how you save fuel. Juan Yate was trying to tell you that last night. He's talking about your truck don't do it. I'm pretty sure your truck do it, man. probably just got your, got your foot on the gas all the time, hammer down. You got to take your foot off the gas and let it roll. All right. All right, time for a little more, Jake. Exit 316. So that means I got six more miles. Well, I just passed mile marker 318. Eight miles. You know what? Well, I didn't know how to read those mile markers until I went to truck driving school. In my whole life, I always see them on the interstate. I never knew what they were until I was in truck driving school. A lot of people think truck drivers are stupid, man. We ain't tell, hey, we ain't stupid. We gotta let the world know, man. We smart. <laughs> Mathematicians. Got to know how to do all this math and all that stuff. Math petitions, engineers. I don't know about the other truckers, but I know the flatbeds are flatbed game. We some engineers. What I say, mathematicians, engineers, scientists. When you 
mix that uh you mix that stuff in your fuel tank so you so you so it don't gel up. That, that's 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 being a scientist right there. How many coffee experts we got here? I'm a Starbucks man. I like to sit in there with the with the rich folks and pretend I'm rich. <laughs> Hey, since I'm going to Washington, I wonder if I'm gonna if I'm a, happen to run into a Starbucks. I believe that's where it originated from in Washington. Maybe they got them at the truck stops. I don't know. Anybody know that? I love asking y'all questions, man, because people always answer back. That's how I know y'all watch my videos, man. Y'all see how dark it is right now? It's five o'clock, man. All those clouds in the sky. I hope I don't wake up in the morning and it's um and it's snow everywhere. Cause I gotta I gotta get these 500 miles tomorrow. I got to. I gotta I gotta get. I'm trying to get the most I can tomorrow. So so Tuesday I can I can knock it out and, and get to my destination that night. Cause uh, I believe by Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday I'll start running off recaps. So I'm trying to get there Tuesday night so I don't have to start my clock up to after I get unloaded um, on Wednesday. Hopefully it can work like that if I can find some overnight parking. Back in East Coast again. See how much fuel I save, man? I've been riding the East Coast probably about, about six, seven miles. East Coast. That guy right there just passed me, he probably giving the gas. I ain't giving it no gas, I'm just coasting. I only got about five more miles from my exit. Me hitting the gas and hammering it down ain't gonna get, ain't gonna get me there but about, about two, three minutes faster. I'd rather, and, and it ain't even about to say, just save a few to get, get the fuel bonus, you know. Save the fuel, man, so you can save the environment. Y'all ever think about stuff like that? Save the environment, man. I used to watch Captain Planet when I was a kid. I don't know if y'all if y'all can tell from uh, from my conversations on these videos, man. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty smart, man. I could I, I could I could have been a college professor or a lawyer or something like that, man. But you know, I made a lot of bad decisions when I was young. Now here I am, 32 years old. I got to do what I got to do. Right now, that's trucking. So, hey, it is what it is. I really didn't have a dad growing up. I didn't meet my dad until I was 10 years old. So uh, even then, I met him one time. And I don't think I've seen him again till, I don't know, maybe three years later. Like now that I'm an adult, you know, we got a better relationship. You know, he lives in Las Vegas. I mean, so I, I do go out to Las Vegas sometimes and visit. I just went um, just this past August. I was up there for about a week. That was, as a matter of fact, I went I went there for a week for like my little vacation. And then my little brother, he got married. And then when I came back from that, I went to um went to truck driving school. So yeah, man. I mean, we got a better one. See, see, if I would have had a dad growing up, you know, the stuff that I know, I, I want to raise my son. I don't have any kids yet either. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not using that as an excuse, but I'm just saying some things I wouldn't have done if I would have had a little guidance. All right, folks, catch y'all at the truck stop. Made it to the truck stop, people. It's packed too. I got me a spot though. I used to be scared. I used to be scared about backing up at the truck stop. I used to be like this guy beside me, just pull straight in. I used to be scared, man. I still, I, I still do get scared sometimes. But somebody told me the best way for a truck driver to back is to not back <laughs> unless you got to. <laughs> a lot of times you find these truck stops, you know, you only got to back up. You just pull, pull in a spot. I don't like pulling in like this guy beside me. You can't see him. Yeah, you might see him. He pulled straight in. 
But I had I had to move my front end over a little bit because I mean if if he was to back out, I mean our mirrors might touch each other. So I moved back over to this this side a little bit. And I and that I mean I'm between the lines. I I think his wheel is on the line. So that's what it is. So when he backs out, he needs to be real careful. He don't knock my mirror off. But yeah, man, I used to be I used to be scary. I still like I'm still am scary, but since I've been by myself. I've been doing a lot of damn backing, <laughs> going to the, going to pick the play, uh, pick the lows up and stuff. Man, I, I have, I've been been in some crazy situations, man. I delivered a uh, golf machine. Y'all seen it on my videos, my early videos. Uh, that that golf machine that, that I delivered. Man, I had to blindside back into a into a building on up like going up a ramp, and then um, you know like it was the building building was lit up on the on the inside and so like me backing up in and then bright sunlight outside you know and I and I couldn't even see in my mirrors cuz I mean it was so tight of a space I couldn't even I couldn't even see in my mirrors I mean I can see my mirrors I can see my I can see my back end going into the building but uh, other than that I really couldn't see but I had two people on each side that was telling me um one guy was like standing on my uh, passenger side on the steps he was standing up there and I was watching him. There's another guy on the other side. He was telling me what to do too. So, and I had the blind side back. So I, I started out doing a 90, but um, I did that just to line myself up. But then I had to pull back up to the right because it was some um, some light poles and stuff up there. So I had to end it up swinging it back around and do a blind side to get up in there. And that was a pretty difficult back, man. Everybody, had, everybody that was there, they was like, "Man, it was like, how long you been driving?" I said, "Man, I ain't been driving about three months." They was like, "Man, that, that, that looked like it was hard." I said, "Man, it was." I, I had, I got out and looked twice, and the, and the first time, when, like I said, I, I would when I was doing that ninety, I would have hit that light pole. If I didn't get out and look, I wouldn't have seen that light pole. So yeah, man, make sure y'all get out and look. My my other video I said yesterday, I said um when I um. When I overshot the kingpin, I've done that twice already, twice, and like within a week. The first time I was doing a repower with a guy, I, I dumped my suspension when I took my trailer off. And but he didn't he didn't dump his suspension when he dropped his, so I was too low for his trailer. And and uh, if I would have got out and looked, then I would have seen that. But I'm I'm thinking like I'm in a rush doing the repower, trying to hurry up on the road, just back straight up. Get out, look at it. Fuck, overshot the kingpin, and that one, that one was tough, man. Actually, actually, when I did that, it was with that golf machine. The golf machine was only like thirteen thousand pounds, though. So what, what he took, what we did with that, we took the, um, we raised the landing gear all the way up, and let the trailer sit on the fifth wheel, and then we put some wood up under the uh, landing gear and crunk it up on that, and it, and it got it up. And it, it took, man, it probably took me like 20 minutes to crank that thing up. The second time I overshot it, I dropped my trailer up in, uh, where was I at? I think I was in Tennessee, picking up some uh, some flat steel. No, I want flat steel. It was some building materials. What I took up to Kinetic. No, I took it up to Massachusetts. And uh, I had to drop my trailer. Uh, yard dog came, picked it up. You know the yard dog. You know they lift up and down. He did. He he. I I actually had dropped my dropped my suspension again on this one, and I and I'm gonna stop dropping that shit. And, and if I do drop it, I'm gonna ask somebody before, or I'm just gonna get out and look or whatever. But uh, I dropped the suspension on that one. He brought it back with it lifted all the way up, overshot it again. And uh, actually at that place, it was like four other Melton drivers there. As soon as I um. As soon as I backed under it and got out and looked at it, the other Melton driver, he was right across from me, he looked at it. He said, overshot the kingpin? I said, hell yeah. And he was like, well, get the cranking. <laughs> That's what he told me. But he was like, don't feel bad, man. He was like, um, he was like, yeah, I've, I've done it before too, man. I was like, all right, no problem. And, and I'm gonna tell you how, how these other Melton drivers, how they know you are new Melton, it's something so simple. This is how they know you're new. If you don't got a ladder on the back of your truck, 
If you don't got a ladder, that that means you new. You ain't got a ladder. So I, I ain't got a ladder yet, man. Been taking care of these bills and stuff back home, man. And I, I just went solo like the week before Christmas. So before that, you know, I was getting that trainer pay. So I, I really just started making the good money. And not not even really making the good money. This this load right here to Washington is going is going to uh, put me in the big range. Cause I've been running a little small runs like 800 miles, thousand miles, like little small runs. This the, this is the biggest run I got. So um, yeah, I'm, I guess I, when I start making money, I start getting some more stuff I need. I need to get uh, I need to get me a ladder. And, and I've actually needed a ladder twice. When I when I had that golf machine, I needed a ladder, and they had they had a ladder there that I that I used to get the tarp off. But uh, cause that thing was pretty tall. But if they didn't have a ladder, I would have been I would have been fucked. And uh, so I'm, yeah, I need to get a ladder. I need to get a CB. I need to get a uh, strap winder. I can afford a strap winder, but the thing about it, sometimes when I go to the truck stop, I, I forget to get it. And then when I looked at the one, I looked at I looked at one today, at uh at a Loves, uh when I was in Nebraska, and they had the one, they had the one that you that those guys you know some of those guys leave their straps on the trailer and they roll it up. I yeah I don't need that one. I need the one that you can um where you can roll it up, roll the hook, roll the strap into they self, and you know don't leave it up there. That's the one I need. And they didn't have one of that Loves. So yeah, I need to get one of those. Eventually, I get a navigation, but I gotta start making the money first. So House of Power, since you asked about the pay, when you first start out, man, you gotta grind it out. You gotta grind it out till you get yourself on your feet. I ain't on my feet yet, but I might. I, I, I might right now. I'm on my knees. That's what I'm on my knees. I'm gonna get. I, I'm gonna get get one knee up like like I'm kneeling. Get that knee up. Then I work on getting the other knee up. Then I then I be squatting like that. And then a little bit longer, I go ahead and stand on up. I, I stand on up. And I'll be alright. But the main thing is you just gotta, like I said, man, you gotta stay humble, keep a positive attitude. Don't get ahead of yourself. That's what I'm not doing, getting ahead of myself. I'm just taking it day by day. I was just talking about my dad uh, earlier uh, up there in Las Vegas. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's uh, y'all can't see it. Y'all can't see it. Maybe uh, when I learn how to put the screen on there, y'all be able to see it. Yeah, that's my stepmom. They live in Las Vegas. She she's a flight attendant, and my dad works at uh, one of the casinos. All all they do is party. That's all they do party <laughs> their life is a party hey man all the, all the, i mean all the kids is grown i'm the oldest i'm, I'm 32 my little brother his, happy birthday jordan uh i didn't get a chance to tell him his birthday was just a couple days ago that's the one that just got married uh back in august so yeah man that's that's all they do is party she's a flight attendant so i get, she get cheap flights they be flying to aruba and iceland Japan, China, I mean, they, they go everywhere, man. They, they already told me if I, if I ever drive to Vegas, go ahead, go ahead and check them out. Yeah, man, I've been to Vegas many times, man. So, I mean, it's not a big deal for me like how most people who never went. I mean, yeah, because my dad lives there. You know, I, I go up there, you know. I don't got to get a hotel room. And that last time I did, because um, I, I me and my, it was a lot of people in town for the wedding, so they had people over the house. So, I, yeah, I went and got a hotel room, me and my girl. Yeah, man, we had a ball, man. The first the first time you go, you know, you it's, it, it can be kind of overwhelming the first time you go. But after you go the first time, when you go back the second time, you're going to know what to expect. So, yeah, if anybody's never been to Las Vegas, yeah, I highly recommend it. You got to go, man, at least one time. But, uh, book your flights ahead of time, like, maybe like three months if you can book them ahead of time book your hopes and, and, and on that on the uh expedia app when you book your flight if, if you can uh also get like a um 
you get like a discount on the hotel too when you book the flight on Expedia. So yeah, that's actually a pretty good deal right there. And they got some, I mean, you don't, I mean, you can get a hotel, like my, my hotel, it was, um, it wasn't directly on the strip. It was like one street over. I mean, it's, it wasn't far. But you you can get them on the strip if if you um if if you like it's like I said book it ahead of time but it ain't it ain't no big deal about the room. almost every man you can get nice rooms in Vegas for like seventy bucks a night like nice shit like man you just gotta book it ahead of time book it ahead of time don't wait till the, don't book it like a week before you go go ahead and uh, go ahead and book it yeah I got another I got another buddy in Atlanta I go down there uh, every chance I get too. Uh, so maybe one time, one day I might drive the truck down there if I got like some extra hours or extra night. Might go check him out. Yeah, I got friends everywhere, man. I got some friends down in El Paso. I got a uh, cousin that lives in El Paso. I'm gonna check them out when I go back down there. Yeah, man. Some I got friends everywhere, man. All right, folks. Time for me to get out. Do my little post trip. I already got it logging on there. Get out, walk around, check my load. My tarp strap, I seen it flapping out earlier. I tucked it in twice. I'm gonna have to, I guess it worked its way loose somehow. So I'm gonna get that tucked back in. Then I'm gonna go in here and get a shower. And I'm gonna call it a night. How about that? Still rocking, man. Still rocking. Catch all the catch y'all i don't know when i will say later it ain't gonna be later because i'm done for the day i done made two videos a day done for the day i'm about to go in here give me some coffee too all right folks good night